And as you would expect from the God of the Dead, Hellboy practices necromancy and is capable of reanimating dead corpses. The Muslims also claim that the Antichrist practices necromancy. Necromancy is enlisting the assistance of, or communicating with, the dead. And Hellboy 2 seems to include the Egyptian gods Newt, Geb, and the Sun God. Here's the intro to Hellboy 2. The blood of many an elf, ogre, and goblin was spilled in their war with man. And King Balor, the one-armed king of Elfland, watched the slaughter in dread and despair. The master of the goblin blacksmiths offered to build the king a golden mechanical army. Build me this army, the king said. The golden army had no remorse, and King Balor's heart grew heavy with regret. So he called a truce and divided the crown in three pieces, one for the humans and two for himself. This story of a king who unleashes a powerful weapon against mankind and then regrets it sounds like the story of Ra, the sun god from Egyptian mythology. According to legend, the sun god Ra was angered by humanity's disobedience to his rule, so he sent his daughter, Sekhmet, who was called the Eye of Ra, to tame rebelling humanity. But after seeing the carnage that Sekhmet caused on Earth, his heart filled with regret and pity. So he tricked Sekhmet to stopping her rampage by getting her drunk. Sekhmet was depicted as a woman in a red dress with a lion's head and was said to have been made from the fiery eye of Ra. Sekhmet went by such flattering titles as The Eye of Ra, The Scarlet Lady, The Lady of Flame, and The Lady of Slaughter. The Egyptian gods Geb and Newt also appear in Hellboy 2 as Prince and Princess Nuana. In ancient tales, Geb and Newt were twins and also married. This union angered Ra and commanded his son and their father, Shu, shown here, to see to it that the two remain separate. In this scene, the brother and sister act as if they also have a sexual relationship. I can feel that much on you. Father, we tried so hard to shield your heart from mine. Here's Geb below and Newt above, with their father's shoe separating them. The goddess Newt is typically depicted in a tight-fitting blue dress, just like Princess Nuana's. Geb, the god of the earth, is typically depicted with leaves, and here's Prince Nuana standing in front of what appears to be foliage. Even our old friend Osmodius makes an appearance as Karl Cronin, who, in the movie, is Hitler's top assassin and head of the Thule Occult Society. Lilith shows up too, as Ilsa. Forget what you think you know. Vampires exist. Blade, brought to you by Amon Ra Films, has a similar theme to Hellboy. A bit more than a theme, in fact. Blade is about a character called Blade, played by Wesley Snipes, who is half human and half vampire. He works for a small, secret group of vampire hunters. Standing against him, a vast conspiracy of vampires who are out to kill him and subdue humanity. The first Blade film sounds like the first Hellboy film, the story of Set, Osiris, and Anubis. Blade, who was essentially adopted by a man named Whistler at a young age, does not drink human blood like his vampire contemporaries, but subdues his thirst with feel-good juice he buys from a guy with an all-seeing eye shaved into his head. Blade, as Anubis, was adopted by Osiris, but was fathered by Set and mothered by Nephthys, Set's wife. Here, Blade finds himself in a room with his mother and a character called Frost. You spent your whole life looking for the vampire who bit your mother. Well, here I am. And here we are. One big happy fucking family. Frost kills Whistler just like Set kills Osiris. Blade also includes the always essential Osmodius and Lilith. This three pack of two male villains and one female or extremely effeminate villain is quite common. Blade and Hellboy themselves have quite a bit in common. Both are in secret agencies that hunt monsters. Both are half human, half something else. Both hunt their own kind. Both need an escort at all times. Both prefer violence rather to negotiation. Both adopted fathers have cancer. And both are referred to as the key and chosen ones. And in both movies, the main villain intends on capturing him rather than killing him so that he may bring forth a powerful and evil god. And just like Blade 1 and Hellboy 1 resemble each other, Blade 2 and Hellboy 2 follow suit. In Blade 2, the main villain is a guy called Nomad, played by Luke Goss. 
Nomak's sister, who works for Vampire Nation, teams up with Blade to hunt and kill Nomak. Nomak has many characteristics of Hellboy's Prince Nuada, aka Geb. Both start off in the sewers. Both are referred to as princes. Both are exceedingly powerful. Both are ordered dead by their father. Both fathers are connected to the exact same sun symbolism. Both kill their father. Both fathers become solid objects as they shatter and die. Both attempt to form an alliance. Both played by the same actor, Luke Goss. And, after an extended battle, both die at the same time on the same day as their sister. Even Blade's assistant is seen wearing a shirt that says BPRD, the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense, the very same agency and very same symbol from Hellboy. And the same guy who wrote Hellboy 2, Giarmo del Toro, directed Blade 2. David S. Goyer, who wrote all three of the Blade scripts, also wrote Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. And similar to Anubis and Osiris, his adopted father, Blade finds and helps bring back to life Whistler, who apparently suffered a fatal injury. Like Egyptian mythology where Osiris is killed by Set, comes back with the help of Anubis, lives a short while, then is killed again. In Blade 3, the vampires are working overtime to find and awaken a sleeping god, Dagon, or Drake. Here's a quick bio on Drake. Dracula is only one of the names he's gone by. The Babylonians worshipped him as Dagon, and now they call him Drake. If you believe in the legends, he was born in ancient Sumeria. He was the first of his kind. The patriarch of Hominus Nocturna. He was born perfect. And just like the great white shark, the sky has never had to evolve. Forget the movies, forget the books. There's no happy ending with this guy. He's been there, moving behind the scenes, cutting a bloody fucking path through the ages until suddenly he up and disappeared. There's a couple scenes that connect him to the sun god and to the all-seeing eye. And he tells a fellow vampire, Donna Catalos, to take off her cross. Why do you wear that symbol? Take it off. Why? I will make you a better one. Dagon is an ancient Amorite and Sumerian god first recorded 4,500 years ago. Dagon is mentioned in the Bible as the god and king of the Philistines. Horus appears to be played by a woman, Abigail Whistler, seen here standing in front of posters with falcons on them, and here standing next to a TV that says Sun and the Moon. Horus is depicted as a man with the head of a falcon, and it is said that Horus's right eye is the sun, while his left eye is the moon and that the moon is so much dimmer because of Horus's fight with Set that left his left eye damaged. I like your tattoos. Do they mean anything? Well, they may, because if you look at the tattoos, they appear to be sixes, like Hellboy's true name. The Lion King is yet another film that appears to be derived from Egyptian mythology. It appears to be the story of Set, Osiris, and Horus. The Lion King is about a place in the Africa savanna called the Pride Lands. Populated by every sort of creature in peace and prosperity, the Pride Lands is ruled over by a lion named Mufasa. Then you have his brother, Scar, who is jealous of Mufasa's popularity. He eventually hatches a plan to get Mufasa and his son Simba killed so that he may rule the Pride Lands. His plan partly succeeds as Mufasa is trampled to death and his son and heir to the throne, Simba, hides in exile. Scar, now the ruler of the Pride Lands, merges it with his own kingdom of hyenas. Scar's reign soon becomes a failure as disaster and famine strike the Pride Lands. Simba, now older, returns to the Pride Lands, has a massive battle with Scar, and reclaims the throne. This is exactly the story of the Egyptian gods Set, Osiris, and Horus. Osiris was a ruler of Lower Egypt during a time of peace, prosperity, and justice. His jealous brother Set, ruled Upper Egypt and hated Osiris' rule and popularity. Set is the Egyptian god of chaos, 